Hi, I'm Ryan Kleckner. I'm a former special operations sniper. I'm a best-selling author and I'm a firearms attorney. And I work with just about every part of the firearms industry. All right, American Sniper. Let's just talk about the school here. What'd you see that recoil? Somebody in this movie told them to recoil by jumping up, like the rifle jumps down if you watch that. The muzzle actually goes down on these rifles. You see that one? It just went down. That's the exact opposite of reality, guys. When a rifle recoils, it's gonna recoil back and up a little bit. Instructor steps on the feet. That's actually, they do that. I was a sniper instructor, I used to do that. But if you saw the outside of his legs right there, those targets are like 100, 125 yards away. And they're missing complete silhouette targets. Guys, these aren't even snipers. These are basic training guys with regular AR-15s are gonna be able to do better than that. So they tried to do the right thing, but they ruined it, in my opinion, by not actually shooting at far targets and by not actually showing what I would even say a competent hit at all for an average rifleman, let alone a sniper. And then that recoiling the opposite way uh, just as weird to me. So sorry to pick on it, but that's one of those scenes that just made me scream at the at the screen when I was watching the movie. Yeah. Alright, so Enemy at the Gates. This is probably my favorite sniper movie. Um, it's it's based on a true story, The War of the Rats. Vasily Zaitsev, the main character here, is a real person. Uh, so a lot of this is maybe not exactly how it happened. They had to make a movie out of it, but it's real events, real people, real situations, what they had going on here. And they had just got done playing dead, uh, unfortunately, in a fountain so they wouldn't be killed. And as they think it's safe to come up, they pick up a rifle. And it's important to note here that these rifles, when they handed them out to the soldiers in the movie, they said, each other, every other man got a rifle, every other man got ammunition. And they said, when the man with the rifle dies, the man with the ammunition picks up the rifle and keeps on fighting. It's a horrible just rea reality check on what was going on there. He's getting ready to take a shot. That was an awful lot of rifle movement. I love you saw that, but the rifle's actually moving as you're shooting. That would almost surely be a miss by like five or 10 feet if he's moving that much. But so he takes the shot, he reloads the rifle, he gets back into the fight and he keeps shooting. That's good, he's actually reloading that bolt gun each and every time. He's staying calm, he's taking his shots. Really, really, really impressive deal here. Now the sound of the rifle, there's actually gonna be two sounds whenever someone's shooting a rifle like this. There's the sound of the rifle, uh, the, the explosion of the blast of ammunition. Oh, 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 stabilizing shot with a sling, look at that. I'm so happy he wrapped his arm around the sling. That is a really good trick to do with a rifle. That's what I like to do when I'm shooting. Um, just really cool to see it put in there. Shows that he's actually someone who knows how to shoot a rifle. He knows how to shoot. Uh, the sound thing I was gonna tell you about is though, there's two sounds. There's the sound of the gun going off. It's the gunshot, the explosion. And on a rifle like this, there's the supersonic crack of the bullet as it goes by. So um, they may not have heard the sound too well from in that fountain because it was being deflected or at least known where it was coming from but they probably would have heard the snap going by. All right, clear and present danger. Great movie, some sniper stuff in it. Sniper reaches off, takes up his lens cap. He's looking through his scope. It's a decent reticle. It's about what a reticle is gonna look like through a scope. Probably not the one he had, but it looks good. Silencer on there, shoots, hits the target. And the instructors are wondering, why can't we see him? These things are real. They're called stalks, like you're stalking in on somebody. We do these in sniper training. Except when I did them, you don't lose live rounds. You, you use blanks because the point in this exercise is not to show how accurate you can be. The point in this exercise is to show how sneaky you can be. So as long as you can sneak in and get the noise of the gunshot off while still being able to see the instructors, they were okay with it. I think it's a lot safer that way. They keep sneaking in further. Look at that pan until like a camera shoots. Oh, surprises him, gets another one there. I just thought this was great because this is before I was a sniper. When I saw this, I just thought this was so cool how sneaky they can be. But it's showing good use of the firearm. Love that he's got a silencer on there and how he's using it. The scope looks halfway realistic. It doesn't have digital stuff going all over the place. And they think they found him. 
Rolling in. They're rolling in. They think they got the sniper. Oh. I don't know why the stalker, the well, the walkers were in camo either on their face, but oh well. Get lunch here, Sergeant Major. Where he is cheeseburger. It's a funny point in the movie, but come on, sniper, you can't leave traces like that to let people know where you're at. So, fun clip showing a little bit of sniper training. Clear present danger. Okay, Heat is one of those movies that former military guys or shooters we just love, not because we support the whole bank robbery thing, but because it is just a excellent example of people using firearms the right way. And here they go, they're coming out of the bank. Oh, Al Pacino sees them. He's the good guy. He gets some cover. That's something you don't see in movies either. There's a big difference between concealment and cover. Concealment hides you, cover protects you from bullets. He got behind a concrete building, that's great. He's getting closer. Here they go, they're getting out into the way. Oh, the police are closing in. This just also amazes me too. This is a crowded city street. It's, oh my goodness. I can only imagine how, how horrible of a fear this must be for a police officer to have to get into a shootout in any case, let alone a crowded street like this. Oh, he sees it, picks up the rifle, starts shooting. That's an AR-15 with iron sights. Not a whole lot of recoil to those, that's okay. Pretty realistic muzzle flash coming out of there. Good, good. All right, look, look at that. Decisively moving, keeping his head down on the gun. He's actually aiming and using the sights. Uh, people in movies, as soon as they get shot, they tend to just fall over and die immediately. That can happen depending on where someone's shot, but most often it's not the case. All right, here's he's shooting, aiming, flipping around. Again, just very confident with that firearm. Oh, here's the mag change. Drops the magazine, gets to a knee to get some cover. New mag in, bolt forward, and gets back into the fight. It is super rare to see firearms handling like that. That's very realistic that shows he knows what he's doing. So you want an example of good running guns and actually charging and cocking the guns when they need to be cocked and putting the magazines in when they need to be put in, go check out Heat.